Welcome to Tesla Bytes, where we serve you GIS in small bytes. Today we'll be covering ArcGIS Pro, working with LiDAR LAST data files, and using LAST data sets. Let's get started. I'm here in Austin, Texas, and you can see a top view of the City Hall here. Above it, I have some LiDAR point cloud data. It's from the USGS, and it was received in LAZ compressed format. Using an ETL tool, I had to convert it to LAST in order to bring it into ArcGIS Pro. When you add LAST data to ArcGIS Pro, you'll notice in the ribbon the LAST Dataset Layer tab. Here you'll find a tab for Appearance, Data, and Classification. Before proceeding to creating a dataset, it's always a good idea to take a heuristic approach to your LiDAR data and see how things appear above some imagery. Let's take a look at our display limit and our density. Here we can adjust the dial to either increase the amount of points we see or decrease and speed up our rendering. Now, let's zoom in and head over to Symbology on the ribbon. You can symbolize on elevation, class, or even if you've already created a surface. Let's select class. We can go ahead and accept our defaults, and you can see the built-in classifications here under the labels. We don't need to click OK. If you close this window, you see that the symbology has already been applied. From here, we could use the last points to do some quick filtering, or we can double click on our LiDAR in the contents pane and go to last filter. Here we can choose what we want displayed. Let's take a look at just the vegetation. We select the low, medium, and high. We should be able to see all the vegetation that occurs above ground level. From here, we could move over to data and begin creating surface derivatives or calculating statistics and height metrics, but we're going to go ahead and do a last data set, which will also allow us to do the same. We'll navigate over to our geoprocessing pane and select the create last data set. Add the location to your input files, as well as provide an output name. If there's any surface constraints or break lines you need to add, you can do that here with the input features. Select your coordinate system. I'm going to go ahead and select the default and select Run. After the tool is completed, you'll need to add the data set back into the contents pane, either using the Add Data in the Map ribbon or through the catalog. It'll default display much like the last data file. So why use last data set? Well, for one, you can quickly reference last files and surface data, run statistics and efficient QC processes, as well as display point cloud or TIN in 2D or 3D scenes, as seen here. You can also manage and update your last files, surface data, and even add on surface constraints. Navigate back to Appearance, and we can go ahead and adjust our symbology again. We'll go ahead and accept our defaults, and then we'll double click so that we can apply our last filter to uncheck all of the unassigned. The last data set is a great tool for QC. Since it can reference multiple data sets, you can go ahead and utilize the classification tab and reassign or adjust your classification codes. Heading over to the Data tab, the LAST dataset excels in its ability to add or remove files, which include additional LAST as well as surface constraints. So as things change and your projects continue to grow, you can make adjustments as needed. You should note that the surface derivative tools will require the 3D analyst licensing, along with the height metrics and locating outliers. Think of the last dataset layer as your one-stop shop to QC before you utilize your point cloud data to render or add to a mosaic dataset. Let's go to Appearance and highlight Symbology on Elevation. We've already seen it display in points, but when you utilize the Symbology in Elevation, it adds a new visual dynamic that lets you discern the differences in heights a lot better than just seeing the points grouped together. See how we can tell the height of the Capitol building is taller in the center versus the wings on the left and right. So let's recap. ArcGIS Pro supports LAS and ZLAS, which is proprietary ESRI, LiDAR data file types. These can be brought into a map using the LAS dataset layer ribbon and the appearance tabs. Using the geoprocessing tool Create LAS Dataset, you're able to bring together multiple LAS files as well as update them for projects. The last dataset layer is a great QC tool and allows you to manage your LiDAR data and surface constraints within your project. I think this is a great stopping point. 
To see more topics or make suggestions, check out the channel in the description below. This has been Tessel Bites, where we serve you GIS in small bites. Thank you for watching, and please be sure to visit us at www.tessellations.us. Also, subscribe and ring that bell.